What I hate the most in the world is dry chicken. This is a technique to make the juiciest, most tender chicken in the world. And it's super simple. Just salt and pepper your chicken before you put it in the pan. And if you're using a big, large breast, you might want to cut it in half or leave it for a little bit longer. These are chicken sirloins, very tender also. Add a pan on high, high heat, and then you want to add your chicken in, and you just want to cook it for one minute per side, no more. So at super high heat, it should look like this after a minute. Add a little bit of oil, and look at that little golden color. This is what you're looking for. Then cook it for one more minute on the other side, and at that point, it's still raw on the inside. So we're gonna put a lid on it, turn the heat off, and take it off the fire. And the residual heat will cook it. Now you're gonna to wanna to leave it for six to seven minutes without touching it. And then once that's done, you're gonna take it out and it's gonna be the most tender, delicious, just juicy chicken ever. Look at that juice just pour out of that chicken. It is amazing. This is the best way and simplest way to cook your chicken. So that it's not overcooked. So for this next kitchen tip, I'm gonna show you another use for one of these things. It's a coat hanger that you use in a bathroom for towels or bathrobes. And in a kitchen with windows, this thing is a lifesaver. You just open the window, place it on there, and then you can load it up with loads of pans. And this is just such an easy system to store pans in a simple, accessible way in your kitchen. And you can just load it up with loads of pans and it never really drops down or anything like that. And if you want, you can put sieves on there and pots. It's a lifesaver in the kitchen, to be honest. Give this a try if you have windows. When you buy a fresh baguette, it easily quickly goes off. Look at this one, it's rock hard because I left it for a few days. Now the best thing to do is take your fresh baguette when you buy it and just cut it into usable pieces. So here I'm just gonna cut it like this and then lengthwise. And then use whatever you want to use fresh in the moment but the rest of it directly cut it into usable bits like this. And then once you've done that, you're gonna to wanna to place them into a Ziploc freezer bag. And then you're just gonna to want to close it with the least amount of air possible, and then just drop these in the freezer for later. Now you can do the same with molded bread. Since they're already cut up into slices, you don't need to do anything. Just take the bags and throw them directly in the freezer. And this method will save you bread. When you want bread, you just take it out of the freezer and as you can see here, this is rock solid frozen, but you place it inside a toaster, and then you're gonna have super fresh bread. And this method will allow you to waste the least amount of bread possible. You'll never have to throw away bread because it became moldy or hard. So here you go, you got your toast ready to go for whatever you want to use them for. Now the same with your molded bread, you can just take them out, and they'll be frozen rock solid, like this. See, they snap but once you place them inside your toaster, they'll be tender and just right and perfect. They'll be like fresh bread every single time. So there we go, after toasting, you can just enjoy these however you want to use them and you won't waste any bread. You're welcome. In this trick, I'm gonna show you how to make poached eggs super simply using this pan. It's a much easier method than using a pot because you can make multiple eggs at the same time with so little effort. Now you'll probably see this on five minute crafts in like two weeks because they like to come to my channel for inspiration and just steal everything. Anyway, not salty, just saying. Uh, let's get straight into this, let's go. To start off, you're gonna fill your pan till the first finger segment or 1.5 finger segments. And then you're gonna add a bunch of salt and followed by lots of vinegar. The vinegar is optional, it tightens up the egg on the outside. Now you're gonna to wanna to heat the water up, but don't bring it to boiling, but just a little bit below. So when you get little bubbles on the surface of your pan at about 90 degrees Celsius, that's good. Then you just wanna crack your eggs straight into the water. These are fresh eggs. That really makes a difference to keep the egg white together with egg yolk. And here I'm just going to separate them from the bottom of the pan very, very gently. Now I am using a metal utensil here in a Teflon pan, so I'm being very careful not to touch the pan and just to release the egg from the surface. Okay, so once you've done that, it's gonna take about 3.5 to four minutes to cook, depending on the temperature of the water. Just keep checking it and make sure to be very gentle with them like this. 
Once they're cooked, you're just gonna want to scoop it out and just test it by poking it, just to make sure the yolk is still nice and liquidy. That's the way I love my eggs. And just drain them out on a paper towel like this. Now you can use them however you want, in Eggs Benedict or whatever you feel like in a salad. But here I'm just gonna present them very simply just to show you. I'm gonna add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, a little bit of salt, some pepper, and a little bit of chopped basil, because it just adds something special. Now I'm just gonna cut into it, and look at that beautiful runny egg yolk, that's super delicious. I know some of you don't like runny egg yolks, but I love it, so I'm gonna eat it like this, even if you guys don't like it in the comments. And there we go, simple, easy poached eggs, done. I don't know why, but kitchen drawers always end up like this, just full of utensils, and you can't seem to find whatever you need. It's just so annoying. What am I gonna do? Well, this is the solution right here. These are little hooks. You can find them in most hardware stores. They're really cheap and they come with a little adhesive on the back. You just remove this and then you can stick it on the wall anywhere. So I like to stick these where I'm gonna use the utensils and they're just a lifesaver because it's simple to easy see where the utensils are and you can stick many on the wall. Now I'll stick some links in the description below to where you can get these, but you can just go in any hardware store and you can find these. So this next kitchen tip is all about organizing. You can use these tool trays, which you can find in hardware stores, to organize your stuff and store it properly. For example, spices. Now, this is just one of many spice trays I have, but the great thing about this is whenever you need it, you can just take it out of the cupboard and you have all your spices easily accessible. I have like four of these trays for spices. Now, I have more trays for other stuff, for example, my weighing scales, or garlic and onion produce, or beakers, squidgy bottles, loads of things you can store inside these trays. And it's super useful because you place it inside a cupboard and then you take it out in one go. You don't have to go rummaging inside a cupboard. Or on a shelf, you can have them hanging on the shelf and they give you a bit more space since they hang over the edge like that. Just a great system, give it a try. Okay, so this next tip is not gonna apply to a lot of people since a lot of you probably don't have a lot of cutting boards, but I got many cutting boards since I have two kitchens and I gotta manage these things. So what I found is this simple gadget that I found in Ikea is made for books. You stack them like this in a bookshelf and I just use it for cutting boards. So I'm just gonna show you how this works. I just stack them like this in this gadget. So as you can see, it stands very nice and easy like this and you can just take them out whenever you need and just pop them back. The best is to put this in a corner of the kitchen and then that way it just doesn't take up much space. Basically, you can get these in Ikea. So this is not a product placement. I'll put a link in the description to somewhere where you can find something similar online. I don't know if you'll be able to get the same one, but it's just a very useful thing. And if you don't have enough cutting boards to fill it all up, you can add some cutting boards and some cookbooks. You know? The only way this doesn't work is if you have a big fat cutting board like this thing here from Ironwood. These are kick-ass cutting boards, but it's a bit hard to slot into one of these spots. They also make this one. I'm gonna link these two in the description below so you can check them out. Really nice cutting boards, I love them. Moving on. Okay, so cooking carrots. Very simple, you just peel them, then cut them into equal sized bits. And then once you've done that, you put them into boiling water. Wrong. To make them more tasty, what you wanna do is start a juicer up, take some carrots, throw them in the juicer, and make some carrot juice. Now this is a little bit of a wasteful way to make carrots, but it increases the flavor a thousandfold. Now put your carrot juice inside a pot, add a little bit of butter, start to heat it up, and add a little pinch of salt. Okay, once it's hot, you're gonna want to just mix it to so make sure that melted butter spreads around and the salt also diffuses equally. And then once that's done, you add your carrots. And now these carrots are gonna cook in carrot juice. So instead of water interacting with the outside surface, carrot juice interacts. So these are super tasty, super carroty carrots. The most carroty carrots you'll ever eat. 